lot of terms, dealer price, list price, invoice. Here's what not confusing. It's not confusing. If you go there, save three grand off MSRP. Um, here's a little here's a little secret between Ty Lu and LeBron James that they know is true, but they don't want to advertise it. I was told last night by somebody who I trust who is in LeBron's circle of influence that um, Ty Lue and LeBron know you can't win a championship with this group. And they know Philadelphia has more good young players and more talent. They know that. Um, and there is concern in Cleveland because LeBron wants to give Cleveland the first option to keep him. But LeBron has told teammates and people close to him, like J.R. Smith, this roster is bad. He doesn't have one great young player. Philadelphia's got a couple. Boston's got a couple. Houston's got a couple. Golden State's got several. Minnesota's got a couple. Milwaukee's got a couple. Um, what lessons did we learn from Michael Jordan, the greatest of all time? You can't win alone. Michael Jordan in 1986 averaged 44 points a game in a playoff series and was swept. You can't win alone. Now Kevin Love is hurt. They don't have a star young player. Tristan Thompson no longer fits the league. Forget the Kardashian mess. LeBron has told people he's not committing. He'll give them a chance, but he knows he has no shot to win a title. Last night, LeBron was superhuman. Indiana couldn't shoot threes. Indiana was sloppy, played a really bad first half, and came down on the road to a final shot to tie it. LeBron knows this is not a championship team. Ty Lu knows this is not a championship team. They're in a desperate, desperate search to get the next great young player. They don't have it now, and every other good team has at least two young stars. It's not good in Cleveland. LeBron has a history, his DNA, his wiring, he's got an ejection seat button. He's not going to play trapped, and this roster for two years is contractually tied to Cleveland. LeBron knows this team is not championship worthy. He and Ty Lu both know it. They just don't feel like going public with it. Christine with the news. No, 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 no. Heard on the news. This is the Herdline News. So we're getting some conflicting reports here about Kawhi Leonard and his situation for next year. The first thing I saw was that there are um, league officials and executives that do believe that the Lakers will try to chase Kawhi uh, Leonard in I'm, a deal. I'm one of those. I will. I would like to be one of those. I think that that is what they should do. Whether or not that's what they are going to do, I'm not sure. Uh, because that's what some people are saying. However, Adrian Wojnarowski is saying that they are still going to go for LeBron James and Paul George. So I think that these aren't mutually exclusive. I think there's a possibility do you believe, they're going to try. Do you believe, Christine? Let's put those three names out there. Okay. LeBron, Paul George, Kawhi. Yeah. Do you believe the L.A. Lakers will get two of them? No. You do not. No. So your your bet is the Lakers. Will the Lakers get one of them? I <laughs> I would say they have the best shot at getting Kawhi. Okay. Yeah. I will I will guarantee they will get one of them. You're gonna guarantee it. I'm gonna guarantee they're gonna get one of them. Of LeBron, Paul George, or Kawhi. Kawhi. I trust my sources. Well, then I... that would tell me that you're not they're not getting LeBron because if they were getting LeBron, you'd think that maybe they would get. I'm just I'm just another one. They're gonna get one of those players. I think they should go for Kawhi. Okay. I, li I like Kawhi. We'll yeah, they would to have to. By the way, yeah, they have to trade, but they do have a. You know, they've got some pieces. They've got Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram play a lot of the similar way, and Kawhi himself is a forward. You could you could make the argument. You call up San Antonio and say, Kyle Kuzma was the surprise rookie of the year. You can get nothing out of him in a year, or get something out of him now. Yeah, and, and there might be some real motivation yeah. for the Spurs to want to trade him, especially if he's not returning their text messages right. for weeks. Not cool. Uh, before game two for the Cavs, Tyron Lue called out LeBron James from Bird. He said that he wanted him to be more aggressive. Yeah. That worked. Yeah. Because in game two, I would say LeBron was more aggressive. Yeah, he had a great, great game. Yeah. I will even say he had a great game. Uh, but now Ty Lue is calling out the rest of the team. You need to see more out of Rodney and, 
I need to see more of a lot of guys. Yeah. I think Definitely. they'll get more and more comfortable. Um, but like I said before, just having LeBron and Caleb set the tone early, I think, would open it up for a lot of those guys. But um, they see what it takes. You know, if you want to be champions, if you want to, you know, go back to the NBA Finals, you know, teams are going to come after us. And we've had a lot of first-round tough matchups, you know, the, all, the whole four years I've been here. So it hasn't been easy, and they have to understand that. And we just got to be ready to get into the fight. My takeaway from last night was they don't have a chance. Because if LeBron's playing like that and you still aren't going to win and it was really close, By the way, no way. In the playoffs so far, we know this. If you don't shoot threes well, in fact, if you shoot them poorly, you mostly get drubbed. And Indiana could have tied that game with, you know, how many seconds left. Yeah, and if I'm in the West, I'm looking at the East right now, feeling really good. Oh, God, yes. Real happy. Oh, God, yes. It also makes me sad for the Celtics, too, because if you see the way that the Cavs are playing, I think the Celtics would have had a really good chance against them, actually. Yeah. Um, if they had Kyrie, and, man, especially if they had Gordon Hayward, it's kind of sad to think what could have been. And finally, uh, yesterday it was reported that Tom Brady had not confirmed whether he was playing in the 2018 season. Started mm -hmm. quite the uproar. Yeah. Now there's a report that Brady does want to play. He is going to play in 2018, but he wants a new contract, which I think is fair. If you consider the fact that he is due $14 million this year and then $14 million in the last year, so he has two more years left on his deal. When you think about the fact that Kirk Cousins is getting $28 million this year, Jimmy Garoppolo, which would sting me the most if I was Tom Brady, twenty-seven and a half. Uh, Matthew Stafford, $27 million. So Brady is 15th on the list well, of paid quarterbacks. He was always a good soldier. He always took a pay cut. He took a pay cut to get all of his guys, and then they yeah. shipped away all of his guys. Yeah, but when you're not going to play Malcolm Butler and not give me a heads up, yeah. and we I throw for 500 yards and lose the Super Bowl, I'm done giving you favors and yeah. pay cuts. This is, this is the new Tom Brady. Belichick just did not take into consideration how that Malcolm Butler benching would affect it. And Tom's like, okay, Bill, I was in line for 18 years. Uh -huh. I took pay cuts. You screwed me. Yeah. So now I that this is your problem. I want a new contract. I, I love it. Good for Tom for doing this. Yeah. Christine with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The herd lie. Uh, news. By the way, as much as I, I know the state of Oklahoma must just think I don't like him between Westbrook and Baker Mayfield. Uh, let me just throw this out there. Uh, Christine reported this over an hour ago. There are stories emerging that the New York Jets will will draft Baker Mayfield with the number one pick. Now, now let's say Sam Darnold drops. That may change. Uh, but there's two different stories out of New York right now. Let me give you the two stories with quarterbacks out of New York. And these are people I trust. That the Giants are not planning on taking a quarterback unless Cleveland passes on Darnold. Then the New York Giants believe Darnold is too good of a prospect not to take. That the Giants only like one quarterback. They like Darnold. And the Giants believe we're going to go get Bradley Chubb, Saquon Barkley. But if the Browns pass on Darnold, the Giants, I've been told, will take him and just sit him down. They think he's too good of a quarterback prospect, even though they have Eli, 37, probably two more years, minimum. Uh, the other thing is, um, the Jets have come out, and now this is very, we're getting a week out. The Jets are like, we're going to take Baker. But that is probably if Sam Darnold is not available. What if, what if there's trades being made? What if, the point being is most NFL people I talk to, well, all of them, all of them, I think Darnold's a clear number one. But if Cleveland butchers it, then the Giants will take him. The Jets appear to be in the Baker Mayfield camp. That's their guy. Now, I, I, I told you this last week. I think that's the most interesting thing that could happen in the draft. Baker Mayfield going to New York is fascinating. Baker Mayfield going to Jacksonville, I'm not going to talk about that. Baker Mayfield and his annex and his personality and his attitude and his headbound and his, going to New York, I'll be talking about Baker Mayfield for the next three years. So for me, I love the idea of Baker Mayfield going to a New York football team. Uh, Chris Broussard is right around the corner. He's got all sorts of stuff, going to push back hard on me. I think, I think LeBron's losing in the first round. I, I feel strongly about it. Hiring every business needs great people. Okay? And you can just post your job online. But the reason you'd use ZipRecruiter, because they've built a platform that finds not only the right candidate for your job, but the right one quickly. 
Okay. First of all, ZipRecruiter learns what, what are you looking for? And then they identify the people with that experience. And then they send alerts and invite them to apply to your job. These in, inventions have revolutionized, they call it matching technology. 80% of employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get it a candidate, a quality candidate, in a day. And they don't stop there. They spotlight the strongest applications you receive, so you never miss a great match. Smartest way to hire a ZipRecruiter with their new matching technology. Right now, you can do it actually for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash H-E-R-D, ZipRecruiter.com slash Herb.